Oregon sports fans know Dewey Sullivan for the number he produced in 42 years as football coach at Dayton High School. 352 victories, 25 straight playoff appearances, five state championships. He is Oregon's winningest prep football coach and has been honored as National Coach of the Year. But to understand the true nature of the man, a beloved coach, teacher, and friend to three generations of Dayton Pirates, you need to look a little closer into this town in the heart of wine country. Dewey Sullivan taught science for much of his school career and was fascinated with human nature. Even at the height of his success, he took the time to attend practices and clinics watching other successful coaches, such as Ad Rutschman and Tom Smythe. A Dayton player who made a mistake in a game would not necessarily be pulled out. Instead, Dewey wanted him to have the opportunity to make up for a mistake on his own. And more often than not, they did. And always, the endless reminders to players to tell your mom that you love her. Over the years, his practices evolved, becoming more fixated on execution than exertion. A long evening on the field meant a play wasn't being run to perfection so that it would become second nature during the game. The style of Dayton football remained familiar and simple, even boring to some observers. When the occasion warranted, the Pirates could march up and down the field with anybody. The epic 63-44 playoff victory over high-flying Regis in the 1996 state semifinal game proved the capabilities of Dewey's offensive philosophy. 42 years of encouragement and enthusiasm ended too soon. Dewey left us last fall following a scheduled surgery. The last time he was with his team, he told them he would be back in two weeks. The 2006 season became a celebration of his life and the community of Well, Vera, this is, to say the least, quite an honor. Tell us, if you will, please, your life with Coach Dewey. It was great, just not long enough. Just, just, just. It was wonderful. It was just not long enough. It was, we just had a, he had a great life. We had a great life. He enjoyed coaching. He enjoyed kids. He loved kids. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what else I can say. Football, 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 <laughs> or teaching, teaching, teaching? <laughs> I think teaching. Yeah. Teaching. Football is teaching. Sure. So, I don't know. Well, it's an honor to have Dewey in the Oregon, well, state of Oregon. Well, it's an honor for him to be inducted. Sports of fan, yes. Roger. Uh, you played and coached. Oh, you have a microphone on. Uh, tell us your thoughts about Coach Sullivan. I would say teacher first. Um, he loved football. There's no doubt about that. But he loved the kids. He loved his family. Um, very humble man. Um, the coaches that used to get thrashed by him um, and the, their teams wouldn't probably think so. But they were, they were in awe of him a lot. But he was very, behind the scenes, very humble and very grateful for the successes he had. And he tried to learn from other coaches as well, correct? Absolutely. We were came, coming up here tonight, and uh, the school across the, from the Multnomah Club was practicing. Yeah. And I thought, there's no way he'd come in for happy hour if he could go out and watch for an hour and a half and then make it in the door at 7 o'clock. I love the one line that I had uh, in that piece just a moment ago that he always, the endless reminders to his players, tell your mom that you love her. That tells a lot about the man, Vera, when, right? When a, young man would call, when a young man would call and ask for a ride home, if he didn't end with that, Dewey would have him call him back and say, tell your mom you love her. <laughs> that was stock for him because... Family and love was very important. So. 
Roger, 42 years in the business of teaching and coaching football, a community of Dayton. Now, you have a, a great uh, group from Dayton back there, do you not? Dayton folks, stand up. That's Snap, we have all kinds of Dayton people out there. Oh, they're all over. Oh, they're my goodness. Over. Look at that. They're everywhere. Uh, I would imagine there are endless stories. What was it like on a home game in Dayton? Well, actually, we people kind of got uh, bored with winning. <laughs> <laughs> there were times where you'd walk out on the field for um, a playoff game, the first round or two, and the stands would be maybe half full. Mm -hmm. And then by the time they rolled around, people started coming out. We'd, Go ahead. We'll wait until the championship, but sometimes you don't make the championship. Yeah. And it was <laughs> That's right. What was it like to be a player for Dewey? It's very honored to be a player. Um, I grew up with Brent and Brenda. They were my classmates. I knew Barry and Candy as um, students are ahead of me, the children. Um, probably the best view I had of Dewey was working with him as an assistant coach yep. for nine years and yep. then as his principal. Um, when he took ill in the 90s, he asked me to be with him in the booth, and that's where the story came about. The, the young man who kind of made a mistake before half, and yeah. he decided, let's keep him in. Everything about coaching said, take him out, you know, let's go to the prevent. And he was a tight, uh, defensive end. He said, leave him in. And I asked him on the way down, we were in Autzen Stadium, we rode down the cart to halftime. I said, why didn't you pull him out? He said, if you were that kid, would you want to come out knowing that you caused a, another set of downs for our opponent? Mm -hmm. Um, he's unlikely to make that mistake again. The kid actually ended up sacking the quarterback in the half, so that's why he was a legend. <laughs> that's why he's a legend. Also, when uh, yes, sir. the state championship in 2002, our first series, I think we fumbled the ball. And uh, so Amity got the ball back yeah. and uh, proceeded. We ended up pushing them back, and we got the ball back again. And then... Uh, they said, well, what, what play are we going to run? And Dewey said, we'll run the same play again. What? We just, no, we'll run the same play again. And I think they scored on it or the next one after that. <laughs> Vera, what was game day like for you or the weekend of the getting ready for a game? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, were, you were not about, Dewey was out doing his thing, right? Mm -hmm. No, he, he was nervous. He was always nervous, but... <laughs> He enjoyed practices much more than he ever enjoyed the games. He liked working with the kids and everything. It was more hands-on. In the game, it was kind of out of his control. He hoped they were prepared for it. He tried to prepare them. And uh, I, he, he loved practices. And he achieved so many goals that he set for himself, did he not? I think he achieved most of his goals. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's just a pleasure. He, uh, there's, you talk about legends in, in this state. Dewey Sullivan is a legend, and Vera, that's going to make you feel so proud, it, it right? It does. This is an honor. This is an honor. It does. And I do want to thank my son-in-law, Jeff Bornack, for nominating Dewey for this. Okay. And I also want to congratulate all the inductees tonight, and I thank everyone who played for Dewey or coached with him or just knew him and loved him. I thank them for coming. Do you have any final thoughts, uh, Roger? I do. I, I, one of the greatest honors I ever had was to bring Vera out of the stands to coach five times at state title games. Um, and for the coaches' wives who are in the, in the audience, Coach would, um, he would like that, he would say thank you for the time that you put in as a, a spouse supporting not only the coach but the kids that come with the coach. Um, and likewise, if you're a a uh, woman and you coach, their husband puts in a lot of time. And so I would say this is the stand by your man type of woman. And uh, that's all I can say. I love her uh, dearly. Uh, well, it's time. It's time, dear. Hey, just stand here with me. A real, Rogers, stand in here too. A real deserving honor, there is no question about that. Ladies and gentlemen, officially nominated and sealed in the State of Oregon Sports Hall of Fame, Coach Dewey Sullivan.